I absolutely love the ROG LIX, but I, like many, do not love, or you might even say hate, Windows. It's kind of clunky, super annoying, and Windows is definitely not optimized for handheld gaming. But what if I told you there's another way? A shining light in the handheld PC world, and that light is Bazite. A Linux-based SteamOS-like experience tailored to be smoother, faster, and just plain better to use. Today, I'll be walking you through the installation and setup process step-by-step step, using the stock storage and ditching windows. Before we get into it, you might be asking yourself why go through the effort of getting rid of windows and installing Bazite? To me, the answer is pretty simple. Windows sucks for a handheld gaming experience and SteamOS kicks its butt. The biggest headache for me when it came to gaming on Windows on the LAX came from a lack of the suspend and resume system. Windows sleep notoriously just isn't good and I got annoyed of having to wait for the system to boot and initialize, then wait for Steam to open and then launch the game, only then to not be able to set it down without losing a bunch of battery life, or having to shut down and then have to wait for everything to open again when I decide I have time. I also wasn't a fan of the jumping through hoops to set up weird keybinds to be able to get the Steam menu since we don't have a keyboard to be able to press shift and tab. Bazite or SteamOS makes that easy by instead of having the control center, that button opens the Steam menu. Windows was also annoying for when you had different settings recipes for each game and having it automatically change was only possible by using Armory Crate. Steam gaming mode makes it easy by having a single toggle remember your settings per game and a quick shortcut to change your TDP settings. Another Steam Deck perk that you miss out on with Windows is access to the Decky Loader plugins that allow some pretty cool customizations within Steam and easier integration with EmuDeck for emulation that I will probably go into in another video. So with all that in mind, let's get into installing Bazite and ridding ourselves of Windows. Like I said, we're gonna be ditching Windows and using the stock one terabyte storage that comes with the LIX. So with that comes some, but not many downsides. The first and most important of which is that we're locking ourselves to just using Bazite and not dual booting Windows, which means we won't be able to play games that aren't playable on SteamOS. So that includes games like Apex Legends, Fortnite, or many other multiplayer games that their anti-cheats just don't support Linux. So ProtonDB.com will be your best friend here to check if your games can run on the Steam Deck and thus SteamOS. So before embarking on this journey, I highly recommend you use this website to check if the games you're playing or planning on playing are compatible. So before getting started installing Bazite onto your LAX, there's gonna be a couple things you will need on hand and a few steps to be done before installing to save yourself the headache that I found myself in. So first off, you're gonna want a USB flash drive that is a minimum of 10 gigabytes. In my case here, I used this SanDisk Ultra Duo 64 gig. Now, I actually didn't have this one to start with. I had this SanDisk Cruiser, which I thought would work if I just slapped it onto a USB A to C adapter, but after I went through the effort of flashing the installer, I found out it didn't work, so I had to run out to the office works and get myself a different USB. Another thing you will want, but isn't actually necessary, is an external keyboard so that you can change your username and password for Bazite, otherwise you'll just be stuck with the default. The other thing that is nice to have is a separate machine so that you can flash the image to the USB, and that will be all of the external things you will need to ditch Windows and get going with Bazite. But before we do that, there is some prep work we need to do on the LAX before we can do a clean install. I think the first and easiest place to start that will save you a bunch of headaches in the future is getting the LIX ready to install Bazite. And in this situation where we're replacing Windows on the stock storage, it's not as straightforward as just flashing Bazite onto it. I wasn't aware that the LIX's storage comes with BitLocker or drive encryption already enabled. In fact, I didn't learn this until I was already attempting to install Bazite, which sent me down a bit of a rabbit hole that took this what should be a quick process to taking the better part of like five hours. So we have two ways to go about this that are ultimately the same. The first is just going to your LIX, pressing the Windows button. In the search bar, type in BitLocker to take us to the drive encryption page and toggling off the encryption. In my case though, because I was already tired and annoyed that encryption was turned on on my gaming device, my drive was basically full with games and other junk, which meant that the decryption of the drive and the files within was gonna take an exceptionally long time. So in my infinite wisdom, I decided to wipe the drive and use cloud recovery built into the BIOS. Don't do that. Don't be silly like me. I didn't realize that this would add an extra two hours to the install. Just delete all your games, uninstall anything to free up as much space on your drive as you possibly can to make decryption process faster. 
and just let it do its thing before installing Bazite. While that does its thing in the background, we should probably get our installer prepped. Firstly, we're actually going to download and install a way to flash the Bazite installer onto the USB drive if you don't already have one, since it's not as simple as dragging and dropping it onto the drive itself. I'm going to show Belina Etcher here since it's pretty easy to use and is available on Windows, Mac OS and Linux. But feel free to use whatever software you want if you already have another like Rufus. Now, theoretically, you could totally install and flash all of this on the AlliX directly, but I'm going to do this on a separate machine just in case something goes wrong. So now that I'm on my MacBook and on my web browser, we're just going to Google Belina Etcher. Once on the website, we'll just click on the big green download button and that'll scroll us down the page. Once we're here, just select the installer that corresponds to the machine that you're using. While that downloads, we may as well go ahead and download the Bazite image too, since we're going to need that also and it's not exactly a small file. So again, in the search bar, just type in Bazite and click on the bazite.gg link. On the top right, just click the download Bazite button then here, the website makes it pretty easy. Click on the drop down menu and choose the option for the Ally and Ally X. Next, we have the option to choose between our desktop environments. To keep things simple and similar to SteamOS, I'm just going to go with KDE. Once you do that, we'll be scrolled down the page a little and under the new user header, there'll be a purple download Bazite dash deck button. Click on that to get the download started since the file itself is just a bit shy of 10 gigabytes. While that downloads, I would take this time to install Belina Etcher if you haven't gone ahead and done that. So just click on the installer and follow the prompts. So hopefully by now Belina Etcher is installed and the Bazite image is downloaded. Go ahead and plug in your USB flash drive so we can flash the image onto it. From here it's super self-explanatory. Just select the Bazite image from wherever you downloaded it to. Then in the middle, select your USB drive, then click the flash button. It will then take its time to flash and write everything it needs to onto the drive and then verify the integrity of the flash. Once it's done, you can safely eject your drive to make sure that nothing goes wrong as it can cause issues if you just yank it out. And with that done, you now have your Bazite installer finished and ready to go. So all that's actually left is installing Bazite onto your LIX, which hopefully by now has finished decrypting the drive. And if not, that's okay. So take this time, go make yourself a coffee or grab yourself a snack and a drink. You deserve it. And while you're at it, why not click on that cheeky little subscribe button down below. So now that you're recharged and caffeinated, we can actually get into ditching windows and getting Bazite onto your LIX. So first things first, what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you have your external keyboard handy if you're planning on using that to change your username and password. And also the all important USB installer. So go ahead and plug in that USB and then we're gonna have to get ourselves into the bootloader in the BIOS. To get there is pretty simple. With your LIX turned off and your USB installer plugged in, press the power button and the volume down button at the same time and continue to hold the volume down button until you see this BIOS screen. Once we're in the BIOS, you'll be able to see on the right that the USB has been recognized as a bootable drive. So to start the installation and boot from that USB, we'll need to tap on the boot menu button down on the bottom of the screen. After that, the boot menu itself will open and we'll just select the USB and the Ally X will boot into the installer. Once we're in the installer, first off, we'll be given a couple of options to either just install Bazite or to check the integrity of the installer and then install. Out of pure safety, I chose the check before install option. The text on this screen is super small and hard to show, but it's just checking the installer and then we'll be greeted by the actual installer GUI. If there was any issues with your installer medium, the screen with the scrolling text will let you know. Now that we've finally gotten into the installer GUI, the first screen we look at will allow us to choose the language that we want to use for the installation process. So I went ahead and chose English. After that, we'll be brought to the main installer page. In here, the first thing we can do is go into the time settings and choose your time zone. After that, the next step will require the use of your external keyboard. So go ahead and tap on the user creation tab if you have that keyboard plugged in and ready to go. And a word of warning, if you don't have a keyboard, don't tap on user creation and skip this step. If you do have that keyboard, go ahead and type in your desired username and choose a password you'll remember. Once you've set all of that, we'll go back into the main screen and choose the installation destination tab. And since in this guide, we're just using the stock drive and replacing Windows, this is gonna be pretty simple. In this tab, just make sure we've selected the stock drive as our, as our destination and not the USB that we have plugged in. Then underneath, select the free up space by removing or shrinking partitions option. After that, you can 
tap on the done button on the top left and the reclaim disk space window will pop up. On this window, all we want to do is tap the delete all option on the right to select all of the partitions. Then finally, we can tap on the reclaim space button so we can free ourselves from Windows. After we do that, we'll be brought back into the main page where the install button on the bottom right will be blue and we can tap on that to begin the install. This will take a few minutes, so feel free to stretch your legs and make yourself a second coffee or grab another drink. Once that installer is basically done, we'll have a blue screen waiting for us, which would normally be a scary thing if you're used to using Windows machines, but this one basically tells us that we have secure boot enabled on our LAX. To get past this is really simple. What we wanna do is use the keyboard to get to the enroll MOK option, then the continue option, and then hit yes. After that, there is an option asking for a password. What we want to type in here is universal blue in plain text. And note here that there is also no indication that you have typed anything on this screen, but once you've typed in universal blue, hit enter and then select reboot to continue the installation. Once it's rebooted and the installation is finished, we have some setup to complete, but before we go too far, you can now pull out that USB drive. The first of these things is logging into your Steam account. So choose your language, choose your time zone, log into your Wi-Fi, and then Steam will install itself. After that, just log into your Steam account. Here, since I use the Steam app on my phone, I just use the QR code, but you can log in normally. Once that's finished and the Steam tour is done, we're gonna reboot our system once. You can do that easily by pressing the control center button on the Ally under the select button, then going down to the power option and then restart. With the Ally X restarted, tap on the control center button again, then back to the power option, but this time we're gonna press the switch to desktop option. As soon as you do that, you'll have the Bazite setup window that says welcome to Bazite deck to start with. Here, we'll just go through that wizard. Once you tap next, there will be a screen with a bunch of toggles for additional applications for us to install. Most of this will be up to personal preference, but one thing we almost definitely want to install is Decky Loader. The rest is pretty self-explanatory with the descriptions. Emu deck is something that I want, but I'll leave that one for another day and do a separate guide for. So just choose the app that you want and tap on install. Once you do that, you may be asked to set up a KDE wallet. I chose classic encryption just because I'm not storing any personal information on here. All this will ask for is your password that you set up during the installation. So type that in and verify it. If you skipped that step in the installation, the password will be Bazite or lowercase. Then again, when you get asked for your pseudo password, go ahead and type that same password in again. After that, we'll have another application toggle window. I just left the defaults here and finished the wizard. Once you've finished that, go into the start menu and reboot one final time. Now, technically we have fully installed Bazite and it's ready to use, but there are a couple tweaks we can do to make our experience a little nicer and a little easier to use. For the first of these, we need to be in desktop mode to do so. In the desktop mode, tap on the start menu, then we're gonna go into settings. Once in the settings, the first thing I'm gonna do is change the display scaling since to start with, it's pretty large and slightly janky to use, especially when you try to use the virtual keyboard from Steam. From default, it's set to 200, but I like it at about 150%. Other than that, you can make sure your resolution is set to 1920 by 1080 and the refresh rate is 120 hertz if you're following this for the LIX. Then you can change your wallpaper and make any other changes you would like to do so here, but I didn't feel the need to. On our desktop, we should have an app that takes us back to gaming mode. So click on that bad boy to take us back into Steam. Actually, now that I think of it, we probably don't need to be in gaming mode to do this, but since we're here, we may as well stay here. We're gonna set up our desktop controls here so that we can use our controller to navigate in desktop mode. So hit the control center button, then into Steam settings. After that, go into the controller sub menu, scrolling down there till you see desktop layout and then selecting edit. Choosing the first option in there, we wanna make sure that the official layout for desktop configuration is set. Finally, we should look at handheld daemon, which has some nifty settings for us to play with. We can get into the quick options for handheld daemon by double pressing the armory crate button. In here, we can quickly make changes to TDP and RGB settings and such, but if we press the Y button, we'll be taken into the full settings. Here, we'll have access to some pretty powerful and useful stuff. In the first TDP tab, we can obviously change our TDP settings. We can mess with custom fan curves if you want to. Extreme standby mode will lower the power consumption in standby mode by turning off the power light and make it take longer for the controller to wake from sleep. You can change the CPU settings and GPU frequency modes to manual also, but the option I think is most important is setting the charge limit. 
to protect our battery longevity. We can get to the RGB settings by pressing the right bumper. Here, you can customize it to however you like. The last tab I'll focus on is the controller settings. First, in here, we can change the controller emulation. Changing which one in the dropdown tells you what each controller allows for. Then scrolling down, we have more options to customize the experience. I won't go into too much detail with much else in here, but there is plenty to play with, such as setting up shortcuts and changing the theme for handheld daemon itself. Bazite is now installed and set up, but the job isn't quite done yet. You've still got to download and enjoy your games, which is ultimately the most important step. There's a ton more customization that you can do here that escape the scope of this video. You can look into those Deki Loader plugins, there are non-Steam game launches to add like Heroic or Lutris. There's still all of the Linux settings I never went into. More complicated power tuning and fan curves you can play with. Honestly, that stuff is too annoying for me to set up personally since I wanted Bazite for a simpler gaming experience. One thing that I didn't go over that I will install is Emudeck and Emulation to enjoy all of my retro games. Don't worry, that one will become a video in the near future. For now though, I will enjoy playing my PC games and being able to get into and out of them hassle-free. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like the video if you did. Leave a comment down below if there was something that I missed or if you want some elaboration or just want to say g'day. And lastly, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. It helps a heap and it'll mean you won't miss another video from me if you like this sort of stuff. Stay beautiful and I'll see you all on the next one.